Yeah, welcome to the computer vision study group again. Um, today, uh, I want to talk about a paper that is, um, well, not that new, but well, it was released in summer, but it was only now accepted to the NeurIPS conference, which is happening in a few days, right? So if you're at NeurIPS by any chance, you might come across this paper. Um, the full title is Course to Fine Vision Language Pre-Training with Fusion in the Backbone. That is a really long title. So they said, okay, in short, it's fiber. So I will mostly refer to it as fiber, right? Because <laughs> the, the whole title is just too long. Um, and as usual with my presentations, I thought of a little theme to go with the whole thing. And um, for this one, I actually chose Pokemon, right? So let's start with a little intro. So first, the title screen, right? The good old uh, Pokemon title screen, you might know from your old days. Uh, and let's jump in. So this is Huck Trainer, and he wants to become the best Transformers trainer of the whole world. Because who, who doesn't want to be the best Transformers trainer of the whole world, right? Currently, he's on a mission to become the champion of the Vision Language League. So he has already trained some really powerful Transformers and in his current team are Albeth, M. Detter, Clip, and Ofa. So of course these aren't really Pokemon, right? You probably have never seen one of them. It's actually papers that are in a similar domain as Fiber. So they're all vision language papers. And um, to create these visuals, I, I used a diffusion model, but uh, you can find the space on Hugging Face as well. Uh, that was um, published by Lambda Labs, I guess. If you have time, we can look at it in the end. But yeah, you will see some of my creations uh, in the presentation. It was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, back to the intro. But there is a wide range of strong opponents in the Vision Language League. For example, vision question answering a visual question answering, image text retrieval, image captioning, object detection, phrase grounding, and referring expression comprehension. All right, so again, um, I guess you've never seen these before, <laughs> but <laughs> I had good fun creating all of these. It's just hard to remember which one is which actually. <laughs> Sometimes like, wait, which one was it? So uh, yeah. Let's see. So Hux Transformers were really good. He trained them well, but something was still missing, right? So the Transformers are good. But he was looking for the one that could beat all the tasks. So he went on his search. You know, he was searching far and wide across the land and everything, uh, or across the web, right? So he was going to all the resources now, like Archive, Papers with Code, Twitter, maybe now Mastodon. Um, and he went to conferences, right? Just some of them here, like New Rips, uh, AAAI, ICML, ICLR. And one day he found it, the legendary Pokemon that could solve all the tasks I just showed, or Transformer. It's not a Pokemon, it's a Transformer, right? <laughs> I might mistake that uh, sometimes. And here it is, Fiber. So that's, that's a Fiber Transformer visualization and fiber now can battle all these tasks right so this is visual, visual question answering um, image captioning image text retrieval phrase grounding mm -hmm. object detection and <laughs> the big one referring expression comprehension i was able to remember what they are yes he beat them all and now, finally, with the help of Fiber, Huck was able to become the champion of the Vision Language League. Right, so, yay, he made it. Great. <laughs> so much for the little intro. I hope you had fun. I had fun creating it. <laughs> it took a long time, but I had fun. And now let's look at the paper, right? So, like, <laughs> really, that is the paper, the, the front page of the paper. Um, Maybe a, a short uh, note on the authors. So here's Xi Du. I hope I 
pronounce it correctly, and Ashwarya Kamat, uh, and yeah, Segan. And actually, Ashwarya is uh, a bit known to me because she already published the M. Detter paper. And uh, right before the session now, like a few days ago, I wrote a mail to her, her and asked if I could have a look at the code of Fiber because there is a repository, as you see here, but there is no code in there yet. And, and she was super nice. She was like, yeah, sorry, there was some internal problems with Microsoft and releasing the code, but she hopes it will be up by the end of the month. So hopefully in a few days, maybe in time for New Europe's. Um, and she also sent uh, the code to me actually to have a look at it. And that was really nice and really helpful for the whole preparation here. So thank you, Aishwarya, if you're watching this. <laughs> and I hope I don't uh, talk stupid things uh, here that are not right about the paper, then Aishwarya can correct me. But yeah, let's start. So let's first look at vision language pre-training and the traditional training, right? So we start with like traditional training. Um, you have two classes, right? You have Pokemon and you want trainers and then you just want to classify. So what you do is you get your neural network, <laughs> which also is a um, diffusion creation. I love it actually, it looks so nice. Uh, <laughs> like a real neural network for me. And you drain it, so it charges up, right? It gets all glowy and stuff. Then you can query it, for example, the Dragonite, and you hope it gives you the class Pokemon. That's like, yeah, your 101 of well, training image classifier, for example. So let's have a look at vision language pre-training, right? I called it like the new way, even though well, it's not that new, but uh, well, the different way. So you have like an image, for example, the chamander in, in a tree, and then you have a text to it, which describes the image. So a chamander standing next to a tree. You put that in into your neural network. It loads up, right? <laughs> it's strained now. And then you can query, for example, how many chamanders are there? And hopefully it will tell you one. Great. So that's something it just learned from a lot of these pairs it has seen, right? It, it has understood like, ah, oh, that's a Charmander and how many are there? I find exactly one. Okay. So we can bit, go a bit more sophisticated, right? So like a cool Charmander with sunglasses standing next, uh, standing to the left of a tree. That is already a bit more sophisticated uh, in terms of the text. And Another task that you could do is say like, okay, I want to get a caption. And then you hope to get the same thing out or something quite similar at least. Um, and yeah, that's captioning, right? But we can go even a step further now. So we've got the cool Charmander. Now it's a cool Charmander with sunglasses standing next, uh, standing to the left of a tree, which caught fire. Oh, how could that happen, right? Uh, now, what you can do is you can draw bounding boxes and actually say like, okay, here's a cool Charmander, here's the sunglasses, here's a fire, and here's a tree. So we enrich the information a bit, right? We've got like the text, we've got bounding boxes, and we've got the image. And that's actually really helpful because now we can do some crazy things. For example, oh yeah, we load up the network, of course, the transformer. And we can query, okay, give us fire and sunglasses, right? And then you get the bounding boxes of fire and the sunglasses, which is really nice. There's object detection just there from like, uh, yeah, these pairs. Um, last step <laughs> after this, we're done with vision language pre-training. So now there's another Chamander, right? A Chamander, right of a cool Chamander with sunglasses standing to the left of a tree, which caught fire. So again, oh, this time it's already trained. Um, and we query the Chamander right of the cool Chamander. And hopefully we will get this Chamander bounding box out. So it learned that there's this Chamander right of the cool Chamander. Right? That's actually what is referring expression comprehension. <laughs> this, the big boy transformer. Oop, that was too fast. So 
these tasks I just showed, right? We can say like, okay, um, there are two categories like image level and region level and image level is stuff like visual question answering, image captioning and image text retrieval. So these image level tasks are stuff where you don't need the bounty boxes, right? You don't need the fine grained, um, the fine grained information that the bounty boxes give you. You just really need like the image and the description of the image. Now for region level tasks, you will need actually these bounding boxes. So you can do stuff like phrase grounding, um, which is really similar to object detection, right? So yeah, a referring expression comparison and even stuff like zero shot object detection. So you can detect objects that you have not really labeled. So it's like zero shot, never seen before, but it can still give you these objects. So this brings us now to fiber. Fiber itself has like this two stage pre-training setup um, that is at the core. So the first stage pre-training actually takes care of the, the image level tasks, right? And the second stage pre-training also called the, the fine grained pre-training or coarse grained and fine grained. Um, this one is for the more region level tasks, right? The more fine grained tasks, so to say. So here you only get like the input image text go into fiber and you get, um, you use some stuff like your image text contrast with loss, mask language modeling and image text matching. Um, and when you have trained this first stage, you can do stuff, uh, you can fine tune and then here do stuff with VQA image captioning and image text retrieval, right? So on the second stage, actually you can then, when you have all this information, uh, you put an object detection head on fiber and then you can fine tune this pre-trained thing and you can do stuff like uh, general object detection and phrase grounding. So here you can see a bit of the difference between object detection and phrase grounding. So for object detection, mostly you just like put in single words, right? Like person, bicycle, tent, whatever. And for phrase grounding, you have like a whole sentence. And then from this sentence, um, the transformer just looks what it can find in the image. So it is, yeah, a bit more natural in a way, this phrase grounding. But of course we will have a look, a closer look at the whole thing now. So um, the whole architecture, in itself, so you can see it a bit uh, simplified over here, right? So there's a vision transformer and a language transformer. And in the modules, actually, that's one of the most important things is the cross attention module. So as vision transformer, they use SWIN as a backbone. I will tell you later why exactly. And for language, they use Roberta. Actually, I, <laughs> they never really mentioned why they use Roberta but they just use Roberta, okay? It's good enough for their cases. Um, yeah, and now the cross attention is, uh, as I said, quite important here because most other transformers that I showed before that are also in the vision language stuff, right? They are using cross attention or they're doing, doing the fusion between those two transformers after the whole uh, yeah, attention stuff. Basically, so after they have trained everything in the layers and they have the embeddings, they then fuse that stuff like as a head, a fusion head. But here they are using it right in the backbone, right? So you get self attention over there from the language and self attention from the vision to the language. And they say, okay, but this cross attention actually it is um, flexible, it can be switched off. So, for example, you can say, like, yeah. Uh, for this task, we don't want cross attention here. We just want it here, or we don't want cross attention at all. So they they build a mechanism where you can actually control if you want to use cross attention at all or not. Um, and yeah, we can have a look here, like for the task what they did. So like for VQA and visual reasoning tasks, they use cross attention. For image text retrieval, actually no cross attention at all. So it's just like a dual encoder. You just get vision embeddings and language embeddings in the end for image text retrieval and captioning is actually quite interesting because they say like okay we take like the last the output of the last layer really of the vision transformer 
and use that as an input for the cross attention modules in the language transformer, which makes it a kind of a sequence to sequence model. And that works pretty well for the captioning. And yeah, for object detection and grounding, it's actually similar again to the visual question answering, right? They just use cross attention uh, everywhere, <laughs> basically. So the full cross attention setup and the object detection head on the vision uh, backbone in the end. So just overview again, right? You see the differences now in these things. Uh, so how does this gating mechanism actually work, right? How do they turn it off and on? So first, they've got this cross attention, right? You just um, calculate it with a query key and value as usual. And then they actually have a parameter called alpha. And alpha is um, a learnable parameter and it controls this cross attention thing by being multiplied with the whole matrix. All right, so when alpha is zero, it's off. When alpha is more than zero, uh, yeah, above zero, <laughs> basically, it's on, right? And when it's on, it just gets added to this whole feed forward thing. So I think the next, yeah, the next slide, <laughs> I, just, I just had fun creating like this, on, off, on, off. <laughs> you can just click on it and then do on, off, on, off, here. Alpha more than zero, it's on. Alpha equals zero is off. So yeah, not much more value in these slides, but you can play around. When you have a look at the slides, make sure to, to click on the button. <laughs> okay, now we look at the, the course pre-training stage that uh, Fiber uses. So as input for the course pre-training, they just take a low resolution image because for the task, like these image level tasks, you don't really need a high resolution image because you don't really care about details. So you can just take a low resolution image that helps you doing training, right? So you've got your fiber transformer right here. You get, get your low resolution image, feed it into the fiber transformer. The fiber transformer charges up again, <laughs> right? Uh, now it's drained. And what you get out is visual question answering, captioning and image text retrieval. Of course, it's the really high level. So um, I mentioned before they're using like these three methods and let's go through them. So it's image text contrastive learning, uh, masked language modeling and image text matching. Let's start with the image text contrastive learning. Just really short, um, it's nothing new. They just use it like, because it worked in other papers, right? They say like, okay, we use that because it, it works pretty well actually. Um, and why they are doing this, um, I, I put this alpha here, which says that here the cross attention is actually turned off. So while they're doing the image text contrastive learning, they don't have cross attention used in their uh, in the backbone, basically fiber. So image text contrastive learning is really just okay. You have your your matching pairs like a Squirtle, Charmander, and a Bulbasaur, and then you have like double the amount of negative samples. And now what you want to do is that you want to minimize the distance between these pairs, between the positive pairs, and want to maximize the distance between uh, the negative pairs. So when you have embeddings for, like division embedding for the Squirtle and uh, text embeddings for Charmander, these embeddings should have like a far distance, right? They shouldn't be too close together. But when it's a Squirtle and a Squirtle, it should be close together. Makes sense, I guess. So next step, masked language modeling. I think that's also pretty well known. Here they use the cross attention actually. Um, <laughs> and we have a sentence, for example, Blast Toys is the best Pokemon ever, which is of course true and <laughs> not ready to discuss. Um, yeah. What? Check this out? No. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just looked in the chat. And yeah, so you've got these tokens. Then they say, okay, we mask 15% of those tokens, which is, well, when you have six tokens, it's about one token that is masked. Here's the masked one. 
Actually, today I learned about the English name for these ones. It's un unknowns, I think. I just know that in German there's incognito, but in, in English apparently unknown. So the unknowns mask this token here, and then you just like learn to predict the token, right? And yeah, mask language modeling. I think a pretty well known concept. And the last one, image text matching, is similar to image text contrastive loss, I would say. So you have like three texts, again, a squirtle, the shamander, and a squirtle with sunglasses, right? And now you want to kind of classify it. So this one and this one, is that like a true match or is it a false match? So true or false, right? And then you just, yeah learn to predict this stuff, uh, if it's true or false, kind of binary classification. And what they're doing, they are doing a hard negative mining. So they want to find like examples like a squirtle with sunglasses that is pretty close to a squirtle in, in semantic terms. And for that, they actually go back to the contrastive or the learned stuff, the learned distribution from the contrastive loss and look for pairs that are close together in this contrastive loss, but are not the same, right? So that's how they mine for hard negative examples and how they improve um, this image text matching in general. Okay, that's it for the course trained pre-training and we can go to the fine pre-training. So for the fine pre-training, we actually take in high resolution image as input, right? Because you want this region level tasks. So it's beneficial to have bigger resolution, higher resolution, and feed this into our fiber right there. So fiber charges up again. Now it's strained, but we also put our object detection head on top. <laughs> so that's the object detection head right here. Um, you could think of it as like a a mask going on here, right? And from this object detection head, we then get uh, phrase ground. We can then get phrase grounding, zero shot object detection, and uh, referring expression comprehension. Okay, so this object detection head actually is a piece of its own. So it's yeah, it, it is kind of special, I would say, because it is really like in the code. Um, <laughs> it's actually mostly in, in mask RCNN module. And yeah, so you might have an idea what it's doing already. Um, and to give another overview of it, uh, let's have a bit of a closer look at the object detection head. So from fiber, we get text aware image embeddings actually, right? Because we have cross attention turned on, our image embeddings that we get in the end are text aware and we get image aware text embeddings. So the other side. It's like the, the text transformer output and here's like the image transformer output. But because there was a cross attention already in the backbone, they already know a bit about the other, right? And now they go and say like, okay, we take our text aware image embeddings and throw them into a feature pyramid network, which is a pretty common thing for doing object detection. Um, yeah, it just helps to to look at the image basically at different scales, right? And that's also why they use SWIN as a backbone and not, for example, the, the vanilla bit, because SWIN is doing this hierarchical uh, analysis and giving you basically this hierarchical input that you need for feature pyramid networks. And then they go and use a dynamic hat, which I just learned about uh, by reading the paper. It is basically, well, it's like detector. So just detecting the objects really, but it incorporates some attention modules. So um, I have my notes somewhere. Let me check my notes. <laughs> I wrote it down. Yeah, so it has this scale aware attention, spatial aware attention and task aware attention, right? It's like these, these three steps that it uses um for the detection in the end and apparently it works pretty well and in the end it gives you localization so like a centeredness loss and a general intersection over union loss 
and then in this case they get the grounding score. So the grounding score consists of actually the the embeddings from these regions here. I'd say like yeah, just the image or no, the, the embeddings of the regions, right? And they get the image aware text embeddings. They do dot product between those two matrix multiplication, you know, this stuff. And then, yeah, you get your grounding score actually. And that's what they optimize. And when doing this, they can do all these region level tasks you've seen before. So there is no more, or they do fine tuning, of course, uh, on, on uh, special tasks. But yeah, that's really all there is to the pre training now. And yeah, there's some more details, of course. I mean, as machine learning people, we might be interested in this. So for the course pre training as input size, they use like a 30, 384 times 384 image. They train it for 100,000 steps uh, with a big batch size of 4096 on 64 A100 GPUs um, and use a Adam W as optimizer, right? So for the fine trained uh, pre training, they have a bigger input as mentioned, it's 800 times 1333 pixels and they train it for 800,000 steps. Uh, batch size is a bit smaller, 64, um, but they are using 64 V100 GPUs. Yeah, so it's <laughs> well, it's done in Microsoft Research Labs, right? Uh, so they can afford like 64 A100 and V100 GPUs. Probably you can't do that at home unless you're rich, <laughs> really rich. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah I know just no, like a fun fact. It's like uh, one point times uh, five faster uh, training than Clip, which is one of the contenders, um, because they're using this embedded cross attention. Why select such a weird input size is a question in the chat. That is a good question. I also asked that myself. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can't tell you why it's 1,333. Maybe they, they did some hyperparameter optimization and one of the parameters was the input size. And then in the end, it turned out that 1,333 is the best size. <laughs> they don't really uh, speak about it more. Maybe somewhere in the appendix. I haven't studied that in detail, but not in the general paper. So yeah, but it is a good question. It's still open <laughs> if the authors ever watch. Uh, the video, maybe they can comment on, on YouTube and tell us. Okay, so that's the details. Now we can look at results actually, all right? Because they've done all this now and uh, yeah, how good are they actually, all right? So here's some, some benchmarks for visual question answering and image retrieval tasks. So the first ones are um, visual question answering, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the second or like the last ones here are the image retrieval ones, image retrieval and text retrieval. And yeah, you can see like fiber down here, fiber B. So they are only reporting um, the the B size, the base model size actually in the paper. So they use Swin base and they're using Roberta base. And um, yeah, they pre train with 4 million images, which is comparable to these up here. Right. And they create out some here, which have like a bigger model size or have more input images. And then you can see that they are like comparing to all the others here with the same model size and everything they are better in almost every task. They're not as good in, in the retriever task, actually, you can see here. But there they say, hey, yeah, we're not that good, but we're really efficient, like more efficient than most others because they are using this, this dual encoder, actually. And apparently that's a very efficient way and uh, more scalable than most of the other attempts. And for that, they are still pretty good. They're not far off from the results here, right? So when we look at 
bigger models. Okay, they're yeah, they're even better sometimes, sometimes worse. <laughs> it's all you know, in general, um after reading the paper I had the feeling, okay, it's it's a good model. It is like for its size it's it's really good, right? That's that's the main point here is for being a base size model, it performs really well. And it has some features that makes it more efficient than others. Um, it's not necessarily a, like groundbreaking or like setting new states of the art everywhere that it competes. Um, but yeah, it, it is quite universal and it is not that big as a base size model. Uh, so on image captioning data sets, um, they actually also bright, pretty good. So here's like the, the fiber base standard thing and then there's something called gold that they can use to get better and then there's a cider optimization i have to admit that i didn't look too deep into these um captioning things like gold and, and cider optimization so i can't tell you much about them if you have questions about cider and gold um well look it up <laughs> i'm pretty sure you can find stuff about it and yeah you can see that they they get really good when they have like gold and, and cider, right? So they are actually um, often state of the art here, and yeah, just performing quite well. And yeah, again, especially compared to models of the same size trained on the same amount of data, they are just better. So yeah, but if you want to take like a bigger models, sometimes you get better results, of course. Uh, sometimes not. <laughs> That's, you have to check, right? So for phrase grounding, actually, that's um, one of the more interesting tasks for me. Um, yeah, you can see again, right, the fiber base compared to some others like M Detter and Clip. And yeah, they are, again, compared to the same size models, they are better. And even compared to Clip uh, with a Swin large model, they are still better in some cases, not everywhere, but in some cases they are still better than the, the large Clip, basically. Yeah, uh, and this one is uh, actually um, the fiber without the coarse grained vision language pre-training. So there they only use uh, like pre-trained weights for Swin and for Roberta, and then right to the, the fine grained pre training step with the object detection head. And then they yeah, just uh, try out how good they are. They're even a bit better at this uh, RA10 thing uh, than the, the pre trained with a fine grained, with a coarse grained. So, yeah, that's the results here. And then we have referring expression comprehension right here. And again, we can see same story as before, basically. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to repeat too much. Uh, maybe interesting is this ref coco G over here because that's like the, the extra long expressions, right? So um, stuff is in ref coco G is really long expressions and they are really really, really well able to handle these long expressions even better than, than bigger models here, right? These bigger models, especially uh, OFA is, is quite a fav uh, well, not famous, but a liked one in the community. And they're on these long expressions, they are actually way better than OFA. And zero shot object detection um, and general object detection actually as well. So here they say like, okay, the first uh, value is for zero shot and the last one is for fine tuning. So that's like when, yeah, the general object detection thing, fine tuned, right? And for zero shot, um, they also report really good, really good values, uh, especially here um, in the Elvis, Elvis data set. <laughs> it's called Elvis, I never said Elvis. Okay, Elvis. Um, Here's this average precision on rare objects. So this R stands for rare, right? And there they're actually really, really good on these rare objects. Um, even better again than the, the large clip. So, yeah. 
that's that's the result. I mean, that's <laughs> looking at results. It was a bit more boring than the Transformer Pokemon before, I reckon. But I guess we have to talk about it. Yeah, no, we're way too far. Oh, here's just an overview of like different models, right? And uh, different tasks. We talked about like VQA, retrieval, captioning, grounding, object detection, and if it's trainable end to end. And then you can see, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay, they can do all this. Okay, and Fiber can do everything. So yeah, it's <laughs> like the others, uh, they often can do three tasks, two or three, some maybe even four, but doing everything is really rare and Fiber is like the first one here. I mean, since it was published in June, maybe it's changed a bit already. But um, yeah, at this point, actually, they were, apparently were the only ones. And thank you. Yes, that is the end. <laughs> oh, we can look at some spaces uh, after this. Um, but yeah, first of all, thank you. And I, I just put all the Transformer Pokemon I created on this slide for you to look at again. So it's quite, yeah, <laughs> some uh, things here. It's really a fun space, actually. And we can also look at the space. I linked it right here, right? And then I can open it. I hope you still see it. Yes, you should see it, right? Because um, it's actually quite funny because there are oh, there examples down here. They say like Yoda, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, whatever. You know, they, they put like real names. And oh, it is funny when you do it because then it looks a bit like Yoda or something. But it's also fun to just really throw in paper names or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the Yoda. Uh, so really, when you throw an object detection hat, Right, then we say like, okay, maybe do 30 steps. Yeah, we leave it there. Two images, generate image. It is pretty fun to create your own Pokemon like that. See, object detection head. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you have to run it again. Uh, that's how diffusion models work in the end, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, there's some more stuff you can check out here and here. But for now, I mean, if you have questions, feel free to ask them again, or we can end this here. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you have more questions, I'm still around in the Discord. You can also like send messages also on Twitter, Mastodon, whatever you want. LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm not on Facebook anymore, so not there. But yeah, feel free to contact me if you have questions. Well then, thank you and have a good day. <laughs>